And do you think you can beat the lie detector test? I cannot. I will fail because my bodily reactions will give away and it, it can be seen on the charts. I have been uh, doing polygraph examination since 1996 from outrage of modesty, rape, voluntary cause of hurt. My specialty is managing examinations on matrimonial cases, getting spouses. There are numbers on these cards. Pick any one of the number. Don't show me. All right. Okay. So, what's going to happen now is I'm going to ask you questions on the card. I know all the numbers, but I do not know which number you pick. So, I'm going to ask you, for example, did you pick card number 10? The answer is no to every single number, including the number that you pick. The test is about to begin. Close your eyes. No unnecessary movement. No unnecessary talking. Did you pick card number six? No. Nope. Did you pick card number five? No. Nope. Did you pick card number nine? No. Nope. Did you pick card number one? No. Did you pick card number three? No. Did you pick card number seven? No. I'm seeing that you lied on card number three. Yes. When I ask the first few numbers, the reactions are not much. But when I ask the number three, the breathing, the amplitude went high, skin conductivity went up, slight pinching of uh, rise of the blood pressure. So all the four parameters indicate that you lied on number three. This man is a lousy liar. The person usually will have a break of eye contact. They will say no, but they, the nodding is yes. So these are simple indicative of a deceptive person, but it is not final. There are clusters of telltales, such as body language, microfacial expressions and gestures. It has to be a cluster of it and the timing of it. When somebody rubs the head at the back here, that person is actually threatened a little bit and he's buying time. Why? Because if you look at a baby, when they get excited, the hair will stand. A good pretest interview is to identify the main case facts and ask the subject to relate his version of the story compared to the version you heard from the lawyers. And then you develop the questions. I usually watch their body language, facial expressions, certain kind of behaviour, traits like breaking of eye contact, straying out of the storyline, buying time. So these are the indicators. So I used to watch soap operas without volume and I try to understand what is happening in, in that particular uh, drama or movie. One of it is people watching, the best just uh, sit somewhere and watch the behaviours of people. You can actually anticipate what is happening. That's how I pick up. I would not call myself an expert, but I know my work based on years of experience. After I left the military, I, I still practice it. So as such, it has become a second nature. No, I have not used on my family or children, but I've used it on my staff. Because there are some of my staff who doesn't believe in the polygraph. So one of the days I told them, go and hide my phone. 
either in the conference room, pantry, or in the toilet, any other office cubicle. And uh, three of them took the test and all three failed. I spotted where they hide the phone. So, it is easy to catch. The main reason is because the examiner can manipulate the test result. As such, uh, it becomes highly improbable to be used in court. I was actually offered three grants to help pass a test, a matrimonial case. I refused to take it. I said um, I do not want to be committed to non-ethical behaviours, especially in polygraph. It is still effective in the cases where there is no evidence, there is no proof. It gives a sense of direction to the investigators whether the person is telling the truth or not telling the truth, or which direction for the investigation to move on from here. Oh, that took quite a bit of time because you become very judgmental. Sometimes you ask questions to your friends or even your spouse and you suspect that there is no truth. For instance, uh, the guy is supposed to meet up, then one of them never show up. Why he never show up? Oh, uh, I had something to sort out at home, but you don't believe him. You see? So it will take some time for you to take at face value of what a person says. Don't read into it. Stop it at the answer that he gives. Do your friends ever think like, I better not lie to Rob? In fact, they have told me right in my face. I don't want to lie, I better tell you the truth. I say, yeah, good, nice. To the people who don't believe in polygraph tests, you should take one and try it yourself. In God we trust, the rest of you we polygraph. To hear more about Ron's work and the suspects he's questioned, from rapists to cheating spouses, do check out my podcast, Heavy Duty, at this link. Do also catch more of CNA Insider's videos and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.